Good morning, everybody. It's 3 p.m. <laughs> it's 3 p.m. So, good morning, good afternoon, good night, whenever you're watching this. Good time to you, okay? Oh. Uh, let's just laugh at him now. <laughs> so, there's stuff in the background. You guys. I'm just a girl. Despite me being, you know, almost 20 year old boy, I'm just a girl. Okay. <laughs> Shit. Like, happy, you know, all, still October. Happy spooky season. We're here again. I didn't necessarily know what I wanted to do for a video this week. I really had no ideas and I was feeling super, like, unmotivated and I didn't create my notes last night and that's when I usually I usually create my notes like the night before I record like on Monday nights I like to create my notes think of the ideas that I want to do and then on Tuesday usually mornings I will record but today I didn't really have any of that I knew I wanted to do something spooky because it's like Halloween the fuck Hello, it's October. This is spooky season month. This is the time. Although I love a good ghost story year round, it's just so appropriate in October. But I was like, should I do urban legends? Do I do a deep dive on like mythical creatures? Like what, like, what do I do? And last night I was at my friend's house and we were watching ghosts caught on camera. Like the OG videos. Like we used to watch them all the time separately. We didn't know each other when we would watch these, but we would always watch these videos of just like the top 10, like the, the top 10, top 20, top 15, number 15. 15, Burger King foot lettuce. Like those videos all the time. I I just was thinking like while they, hello? While we were watching them, I was just thinking about how I used to watch them all the time and how I used to believe every single one of them. I was like, if they're on the fucking internet, why wouldn't I believe them? Now that I'm older, they've kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm older, they lost their kind of like, je ne sais quoi. you know, just because I'm more like skeptical and logical, rational, not by a lot, just a little more. But I'm not going to lie, you guys, some of the videos that we were watching last night, I was like, oh, that's very much real. <laughs> that's very much real. I didn't, I didn't like that at all. Because like, I'm the type of person that's like, when I'm scared, I involuntarily like tear up. There were some videos that I was like, Definitely kind of spooked at. And me and my friend were both like, uh, something's not right here. Like, this is kind of scary. So this morning I was like reminiscing on all of that. And I was just like, damn, I kind of have like a bunch of stories that I could like, if I felt like I, like, I kind of have like a bunch of like stories that I could like totally share. I have just, no, I, it, I like all of like funny business aside, I have a bunch of like ghost stories of my own that I could share. Guys, there's some um, stink bugs all over my room. So if I flinch randomly, it's because I don't want them to land on me. I don't, we live in a, you know, peaceful ecosystem. I don't want to kill them because they're just like doing their own thing. But I gave them three rules to live by. Don't touch me, my bed, or my couch. And we're good. You have the rest of this space to you, to yourself. Just don't come near me. I was kind of iffy about telling ghost stories just because like last week I talked about ghosts and I did those ghost stories and whatever. But then I, I realized this is um my channel. <laughs> I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want to do. So today I want to share some of my personal experiences. But before we get into all of that, the topic of ghosts and whether or not they're real has kind of been around forever. <laughs> it's been around for fucking centuries and some people are skeptical, some people are hardcore believers, and some people work. Get your fucking ass up and work. With the dead as like a job, you know, mortuary's assistants. I don't know if that's their actual title, lobotomist maybe? I don't know if that's their title, I just know that there's a video game about it. And um, mediums, of course, duh. <laughs> Duh, mediums. But when it comes to like, you know, are they real or not? No one knows. I personally believe that ghosts are real. We'll get into that or we'll get into why I think that in a second. But I did want to touch on the opposing argument. Just put myself in that mindset for a second because I do genuinely find it really fascinating when people don't believe. 
in just like paranormal or just like anything supernatural. I just like don't understand skeptics and I, I want to because I want to understand everybody but that's kind of unrealistic. So some people think that anything paranormal can be explained through science. Furthermore, the existence of ghosts and anything supernatural has been played up and stereotyped and dramatized by Hollywood for entertainment purposes. So some skeptics use that as their basis for why they think ghosts aren't real because they kind of just view it as like gimmicky you know they're i don't blame them i don't blame them we all saw insidious like <laughs> not to read insidious but like you can definitely tell the writers were on the verge of a strike when they made the red door um <laughs> no shade to them the first one was good <laughs> just like not every horror movie can be like the classic you know conjuring or annabelle you know some people genuinely believe that there are like you know explanations for everything you know if a door opens by itself oh it's the wind or there's this and that or we're on uneven land the door isn't on correctly it's not level it's not this and that there's so many explanations and while yes i think it's important to be rational you don't want to completely jump to being like that was whole time the hinges are just weak but also like i don't think we should entirely throw out that idea you know because me personally i think you can use basic high school science to kind of support the existence of ghosts keyword is support i think there's obviously going to be a lot of holes in any theory or hypothesis that um anyone comes up with because we're working with something that's like beyond human comprehension you know so it's like we're also not even anywhere near close to having any sort of like concrete answers. We know and we learned alongside of, you know, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. We also learned that energy can what? Not be created or destroyed. This knowledge paired with the fact that humans are energetic beings just kind of screams to me at least that when we die, the energy being held inside of our meat suits, our bodies, just goes out somewhere else. Our energy leaves the body. And it sounds like I'm describing reincarnation, right? I am, just, just, but just walk with me, okay? If someone dies in a traumatic way, the emotional energy of that situation might be enough to leave behind a sort of energetic residue, if you will. Hence why the most haunted places in the world are places where the most tragic incidences have happened. So, me personally, the fucking school bus is like beep, 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 backing up. What's going on, but it looks like I believe that ghosts are like the energetic footprint left behind when someone dies in a specific area or just like when someone dies, period. Honestly, I feel like the more traumatic the death, the stronger the energy left behind will be. I, 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 no, you can't. What am I saying? Oh, I do think it's important to differentiate and bring awareness to the fact that not all ghosts or spirits are human. <laughs> I think that's really important to note. Not all things that are coming through on our like Ouija boards and like tarot cards and stuff are human. I think spirits can be anything from fairies or gnomes or dragons or um, elemental things like tree spirits or water spirits, anything like that. But also spirits can be, I guess, or entities or anything that is a ghost can kind of also be darker entities like demons, poltergeists, stuff like that. Um, I think humans can be poltergeists. That's a personal belief. I don't know if that's true or not. But I also think that poltergeist can also be specific demons or whatever. So be careful when talking to spirits or before you go out and do your little rituals that you don't think or that you didn't do your fucking research on and that you just saw on TV. I don't know. Some people just aren't doing their fucking research and it pisses me off. Also, I don't think that ghosts are necessarily good or bad. I mean, just like people, you have good people and bad people. I'm talking about the human ghosts, not necessarily the other other things I just mentioned, but like some people will experience like something unexplainable in their house and their automatic response is to be like, oh my God, I'm fucking terrified. I'm going to shit my pants. And obviously if you're experiencing something that's completely unknown, I feel like just as humans, we're not really built to handle things that are out of our comprehension, obviously as anything is. What am I saying? <laughs> God, I'm just like saying a lot of stupid shit. I think it's a natural response for people to be scared when coming into things that they're uncertain about or that they don't know because it's like a lack of control, a lack of knowing. 
hence why it's unknown. Um, I was watching a video of The Good Witch, Patty Negri. She was on a podcast. She was talking about a lot of the things that I'm talking about right now, which is also, I should have said this earlier, but like that podcast and just like deep diving on her was also another reason why I wanted to do this because like I learned so much from her. It was kind of crazy. Um, but she was like, ghosts kind of have to, and everything like behind the veil kind of have to abide by human rules because I don't remember why but they just kind of do and so if a ghost is scaring you just tell them to stop and they fucking will. I personally have had experiences that I didn't list today and that I don't have time to get into but I've personally had experiences where I've had to be like okay leave me the fuck alone you're terrifying me and then they do because otherwise if you feed into the fear or the anger that some might feel while in the company of a ghost you're kind of giving that ghost kind of control i don't know super interesting go check out patty negri all of her socials all of everything i just just love her i just have so much respect for like a witch like her like i just like love i just have so much respect for like a uh, like a experienced woman who's a witch and who knows what they're doing and have worked with this shit for years i have so much respect for them and i just want to sit down and have a full-blown conversation with just any sort of witch or psychic um actually i am at the end of this year i'll let y'all know how that goes anyways i've talked too much about anything else now to get into what you guys are really here for my personal experiences my personal ghost stories i have two different experiences that i'd like to share with you today one is mine one is my sister's this first one is kind of like two different experiences that i've merged into one because uh, it's i i like saw the same entity twice for context this, these both happened in my house, but my house was built in the 70s slash 80s and was kind of abandoned for some time. I want to say like maybe 10 years before my family bought it. And we spent like a year just renovating it and fixing it up. For the first couple years in this house, holy shit was this bitch active. It was, this house was so extremely active in terms of like ghosts and paranormal shit the of course i had the, the normal seeing shit out of the corner of your eye a door unexplainably closing maybe hearing like uh okay i just ran out of storage i'm gonna make this so quick this is not my first ghost experience that i've had in my house but one night in like 2013 2014 ish i was in my living room doing god knows what and i i think i was like watching tv or something the layout of my house is kind of strange not really strange, but it, it's just like I have a kitchen area and a dining room area and this open concept thing. And I have two different hallways. One goes into the dining room, one goes into the kitchen, and it kind of loops back in the living room. And it's kind of like a square almost. And so one night I needed to go into the kitchen for whatever reason. I was kind of deathly afraid of the dining room area because when all the lights were off, but more specifically when the dining room light was off, it was just this dark abyss that I didn't fuck with, I didn't appreciate, and it just kind of watched you while you did your thing in the kitchen. And I always felt like there was eyes on me. So there was one night when I needed to go into the kitchen, like I keep saying, and I was like building up this courage, like mustering up this courage. And I was walking through my hallway to um, go. And it, it was even worse because from the hallway to the light, uh, the light in the kitchen was off. I There was one that was like... Um, by the fridge almost, but it's just kind of like that one light that you keep on in your kitchen at night. I don't know why every house does that, but I wanted the big light on and the light switch for that was all the way across the kitchen and you kind of had to face the abyss and the darkness. You kind of even had to walk through it to get to this light. So there's one night when I was like mustering up this courage to go into it and I was like walking through the hallway with all this like macho and my chest up high and like whatever to just kind of like false confidence my way through it. I uh, got to the end of this hallway and I, I was met with the openness, of course, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw this person standing up against the wall with its back against the wall as if it was going to like jump out and scare me, almost kind of like when a dad or your cousin or just like someone tries to like jump out and be funny and be scary to you. I screamed fucking bloody murder and I ran to my mom sobbing and I was like, I just saw someone like out there. I screamed so loud and so blood curdlingly that my dad, who's Jamaican, grabbed his machete and started patrolling the house as if there was an actual intruder. I remember the apparition, I guess, or the entity that I saw so fucking vividly. It was um, a person with a pot, like a 
pot belly or beer be belly with a white wife beater on and red basketball shorts. And specifically, it faded from the neck up and the ankles down. So he had no face, no head, and no feet. So very weird. Just like a neck down to the ankles. That's all I saw. So I screamed bloody murder, whatever. I didn't end up going into the kitchen for whatever I needed. So the second part to the story, like a week or two later after the first sort of like incidents where I saw him hiding there. It was kind of like a similar setup where I needed to go into the kitchen for something, except this time it was kind of opposite. I needed to go into the kitchen to turn the light off. My mom had specifically asked me to turn the big light off and um, I was really scared to do it because of what happened, but my mom was already like annoyed with me and I didn't want her to be mad at me, so I, I did it. I went into the kitchen and I like kept my head down and I was, I was, I purposely did not want to experience anything. I think you know where the story is going, so that didn't work. But I finally go to turn the light off, and as I look up, I see this, I fucking swear to God on my life, I see the same exact male apparition walking towards me. Sorry, stink bug just fucking bolted into the, the window. I see the same exact man walking towards me from the hallway that goes specifically into the dining room. I booked it out of the kitchen and mind you i saw it head on it wasn't an out of the corner of my eye thing i saw it with my fucking eyes i bolted back into the the living room and my mom was like what are you doing like go like turn off the light i ended up explaining to her what i saw and she i don't think she believed me she was like just mad at me so it was the same exact white wife beater and red basketball shorts no head no feet just the same exact apparition. It was so weird. And I remember it was specifically walking as if it was like trucking through mud. like Or like um, just like high knees for some reason. I don't know. It was super weird, super scary. I didn't like it one fucking bit. Although that was the last time I did see that, that, that guy. So I guess good for me. This last story is not mine. It's my sister's. So like I said previously, the beginning years of living in my house were very, very active ones for some reason in terms of spirits. Every morning, my mom would sometimes do this thing where she'd come upstairs and she'd like slowly wake us up and she'd go into our rooms and just like sit on the bed and talk to us until we were like slowly came back to life. It wasn't really an everyday thing, but she did it enough times for us to like not think it was out of the blue or like anything strange when she did do it. Um, so this one specific morning, my sister was asleep and uh, she felt my mom come into her room and sit on her bed. And my sister even put her leg on my mom's lap and everything. When out of nowhere, her leg dropped onto the bed. She wakes up, like, she comes out of her sleep and she's, like, looking around the room, like, what the fuck? To find that there was absolutely no one in her fucking room whatsoever, at all, in the fucking slightest. She was like, literally, what the fuck? Come to find out, I think later that day, my mom had fucking left early for work that morning. So she didn't have time to come and wake us up at all. I don't know. I just don't, I don't like it. I don't fuck with it. Sorry, that was me. I just hit the desk. I don't like it. I'm not a fan of it. I don't like it. Thankfully, I don't really ever experience anything anymore. Actually, most of my experiences when I was a child were in the form of like nightmares or just like feeling something behind me when I was walking up the stairs or just in the kitchen. And like I said, hearing things going up and down the stairs or seeing things out of the corner of my eyes, just like feeling the presence of something else, presence of something else. That's kind of the bulk of all of my experiences, just kind of small stories. Rarely did anything like big happen, um, but there were a couple of things. If you guys want more, let me know. But um, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you really enjoyed this. I love anything spooky, anything creepy, anything eerie. I love horror movies. I just, I just love it all. I love the paranormal. I love mystical anything. I think you guys know that by now. And if you watch this whole video while being a skeptic, literally why? First of all, why are you watching me? Second of all, why are you here? Why are you watching this specific video? Me and skeptics aren't, don't make good friends because and we just hit a point where at some point I feel like you're gaslighting me into thinking that it's not real. And I'm like, well, I don't know what to tell you because I, I saw something with my own two, my own two bulbs, my own two brown bulbs here. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Follow me on my socials. Um, it's probably Rise and Jackson anywhere. Although I am rebranding slowly to Rise and Shine. That one's kind of iffy. I don't know really what's 
going on there, but maybe I know I'm rise and shine on YouTube, so I'm probably rise and shine everywhere else. If I'm not that, I'm rise and Jackson. Listen to my music on Spotify. New music coming soon. I always say that. I don't know. I'm an independent artist. I don't have a team behind me saying that it's going to come out on this day. If you guys have any stories of your own, please let me know. I have such a fun time reading um, ghost stories, as you can tell. Goodbye. Happy Halloween. Good have a nice day. Goodbye.